Ladies and gentlemen, Open Banking Pioneers, hello and a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us around our campfire. Now, we're here today to talk about open banking across borders, solving the interoperability challenge. Now, this is a crucial topic and a very important one that could truly propel open banking into the stratosphere. So that is the potential of a seamless cross-border open banking and open finance. So we're looking at a globally consistent and a globally scalable proposition. Now that's the goal, but it's also the challenge. But there is one major problem, um, problem even, uh, to interoperability. And I always think the easiest way to relate to this current challenge is using the comparison to travel adapters. When we travel abroad and want to charge our phones, if we've not packed the right adapter for the plug socket, then our phones aren't going to work. But if we have a travel adapter, then we can plug in our phones and all is normal. Now, I travel around the world, probably like you, and literally have a bag full of travel adapters with a different combination of shapes and sizes. I have round ones, square ones. I have three pinned ones, two pinned ones, ones that splay apart. Oh, my word, it's a nightmare. Um, I actually have to have a quick Google before um, I travel just to double check. This is ultimately what the question of cross-border open banking interoperability is trying to solve. An open banking travel plug that will power a global ecosystem where data can flow freely and seamlessly across borders, powering the ecosystem. Now, until our briefing call this week, I, maybe like yourself, saw that interoperability was mainly, you know, on the large, focused around standards and standards um, compatibility. It wasn't until Lauren, who we have on the panel from Consentus, enlightened us, throwing in more aspects into the mix, widening the debate. Now, I'm not going to steal Lauren's thunder. That's just not my style. So please, I would urge you, have a listen to what she has to say. Now, as more and more countries around the world embrace open banking, interoperability is going to be an increasingly important uh, for regulators to consider as they begin to shape their domestic open banking rules. And if we look at the UK, where, and you'll have heard many, many times, you know, that expression, we created the blueprint for open banking. And we've seen now how the stars are aligning with what uh, the Joint Regulatory Oversight Committee, JROC, um, are doing, and they continue to act as our North Guiding Star, driving open banking forwards. But from a global perspective, other countries are now getting their stars aligned. You only need to have a look at what's happening in the States. For example, we've got the proposed implementation of the Dodd-Frank Act, Section 1033, and that's going to give consumers more control and more protection over how they will share their financial data. Now, it's highly likely that FDX standards will be adopted. Now, so what's the opportunity in the US? What are the challenges around interoperability? And what does this really mean? Well, you can learn more about this and the impact it will have on the market in our transatlantic uh, Index USA. And we're producing it with MasterCard, who, great to have David back on the panel, Oxford University, and FDX. You know, so should the UK lead on standards? Does it really matter? Well, interoperability is key for global expansion and for, importantly, momentum. Just think for a moment what Apple are doing and what Apple have released. So if we can get countries to align, just think about the potential opportunity this will create. Now, the number of open banking users globally is expected this year to reach 132 million. And that's already a massive uptick from the uh, 24.7 million um, back in uh, 2020, that was. So with improved cross-border interoperability, the greater possibilities there's going to be, it's going to widen the market, it's going to increase innovation. And, and in turn, that's going to mean better customer experiences and an opportunity for growth, whether that's faster cross-border payments, easier data sharing, or use cases that maybe haven't even been thought of yet. But to get to that point, there are several challenges that we need to collectively address as an industry. And we're going to be exploring those in our session today.